It's Eve 2020, and that the date is June 23rd. I am Matterall here with McLeod. Hello. Uh, we have a really cool show for you today. We're going to take it into segments this time. So we're going to talk to Ash Dorothy about Triglavians. He'll give us an update. We're also going to talk to Lichgrave and give us a little bit of market news. Uh, special guest today will be uh, Neo, who's a new player who's come and gone. He's rage quit recently, so we're going to find out why. Because <laughs> we like we like players to keep coming back. This, that means there's something they're coming back for. And we'll meet uh, Zesty, who is uh, the head of Trigger Happy, and he's going to tell us uh, about what Trigger Happy's up to and uh, what the return of Kendar is like, because Kendar has come back. He's the founder of Trigger Happy and also an founder of one of the SIGs, one of the successful SIGs out of in the Imperium called Liberty Squad. And um, we'll find out like what he's going to do on his return. So stay tuned for all of that. But first, let's get into some of these systems here in uh, Dotland and, and figure out like if there's anything that is worth uh, focusing on. So we have... Uh, in the <clears throat> so here's Dotland, the most violent systems in the last 24 hours. We'll try not to get stuck on the routine and maybe just point out some of the more interesting stuff. Uh, so the most, but I will say the most violent systems in Cloud Ring because uh, those can sometimes change. So did I say in Cloud Ring? <laughs> Indeed, uh, you did. In you the seem cluster, to have Cloud Ring on the mind for some reason. Hmm. Cloud Ring in first place, 906 ships destroyed. I like this, 700 pods destroyed. Nobody got out alive. <laughs> uh, and then Catch was on fire with 714 ships destroyed in the last 24 hours. And then Delve comes in third, 643. The systems to look for uh, in the last 24 hours, Uti, Uti J, that's uh, O-O-T-Y, TAC, J in Cloud Ring. There was an ambush there, I think. Um, Actually, there was two Titans that went down there in six, sorry, 622 ships were destroyed along with the uh, two Titans. I think I can dig that up real quick and we can have a look at it. In Udi. In Udi, yeah. So on the Battle Reports channel and Eve on, sorry, in Talking in Stations Discord, we have um, a Battle Reports section that allows us to collect battle reports from all over with little descriptions. I'll read you this description that was put here. Um, the Udi jump gate was attacked by a goon swarm uh, that brought Feroxes and initiative brought zealots. Uh, ASP losses of his logi and kills a few zealots. I'm just going to read what's there. Forcing Init to drop a fax. Then, after losing all logi and half of their booster... Pandemic Horde jumped 31 car carriers in and a handful of dreads. So it sounds like it was going uh, for the Imperium Initiative and then the and then the capitals. The capital ships were dropped. Yeah, capitals came in. And I imagine Insulment in it sort of uh you know uh exited stage left as such. But that wasn't the uh that wasn't the fight that uh uh lost the Titans, uh, that, no, that's different. You know, basically where the two Titans died, that was KVM. Right. Let's see if we can find that. That was KVM, you said? You know what? Yep, we'll pick KVM that up tech. in a second when we do the Z kill board. We'll go back to the, the Titan losses. There was basically a couple Titan losses from mm -hmm. Initiative. Uh, it was late move op people, and uh, they got picked off uh, some funny business with the gates or, or something like that. Uh, maybe language barriers. We, 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 came, we, we came in to assist. It was, uh, apparently it was language barriers, but it, it was too... Uh, uh, to GSF Titans. Yeah. So, uh, but we're talking about a different battle here that happened yesterday at the uh, late in the day. And uh, let's see, the total uh, 282 players were involved. It's about 120 ships destroyed. It was about an 18 billion in losses. Uh, and most of those, I think, ended up being lost by the Imperium. They had a 40% efficiency compared to Pandemic Horde's 60% efficiency. Now remember, Horde and NC had to base, or Horde basically had to drop capitals in order to win the fight. Uh, that's what it looks like. So let's go back to Dotland. So that's what happened in Udi, Tech J. In KVN, that's Fountain. Those 190, 
189 ships destroyed uh, in the last 24 hours. And that is where, if we're gonna, we're gonna steal this system, we'll go to Z kill board. And well, they're already here. Here's the KVN. Um, we had two Titans go down, both from Goon Swarm. I'm sorry, did I say it was initiative? I thought it was uh, initiative that were. Uh, you did. I did. I apologize. You did initially. I was. I. I, I corrected you. Don't. <laughs> okay, so those came out um, of Goon Swarm's pocket. They were taken out by Northern Coalition and Snuff, and I think that happened all together. They lost to Ragnarok. That is Goon Swarm. And an avatar in KVN tech yesterday. Uh, so you know, when when a war starts, there will be targets of opportunity as people are shuffling around trying to get themselves into position. And if you're late and you don't move with the herd, you're more vulnerable because not only are you not with greater numbers that can defend you, but you are also probably on a path that is now very well known by your enemies because they saw where everybody moved. So. That's why move ops are so big. And it's actually one of the most exciting parts of being part of a null sec alliance is those move ops, you can see really the, the entire weight of your alliance. I remember when uh, I was an NC dot and dice, destructive influence corporation, the move ops were pretty, really the most exciting part of the war because you could feel all that power and it was amazing. And this was, again, this was a while ago before a thousand Titans became routine, you know, but it was impressive to see so much hardware on the field moving all at once in a coordinated effort. Of course, move ops are tiring um, and um, usually not that stressful because nobody's going to mess with a huge group that's on the move, um, but sometimes they were. And if you didn't make that first move op, uh, the clock was ticking on you because maybe you had a day or two of grace period where there would still be enough people moving that you would be safe, but not always. Um, and that only lasted for a few days before eventually it was like too, uh, too scary to move, move by yourself. Like, move ups are like a great migration of like, you know, uh, animals and that kind of thing. Like it, it attracts people to, uh, you know, attracts predators around the areas to, uh, potentially pick off things that, uh, are uh, either late or you know not with the herd, not with the pack, right? So yeah. um, I'll tell you the you know, funniest. That's, that's always the thing. The funniest story that I have for a move up. Uh, I was late getting out of Syndicate, right? NC Dot moved into Syndicate. It was about four years ago, and they kind of beat up a bunch of uh, Syndicate moons and took those from the Initiative. So the Initiative was kind of mad, and then NC Dot, you know, after they did that, went back home to tribute. And as everybody was retreating, I missed a few days. So I come back and I'm like, I got to move my Titan. And um, I think it was Opus actually from Eve Onion. Uh, I had vouched him into Dice and he's like, I got your Sino. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's awesome, man. You're super helpful. Uh, so he lit a Sino on an Astro House in, uh, I think it was um, Vision. I think it was Vision. The system was called Vision, I think. And um, it's a very popular system. It's a choke point. Initiative definitely patrols it. Uh, all of NC was gone. I was pretty much, you know, this was like five days after everybody else had left. Uh, so he lights the Sino, but he lit it on top of an Astro House. And I think that's okay on a Fortizar because it's mostly flat. So there's no... Um, towers that you could bump into. But on Astro House, if you light it on top, I think if you don't light it high, high enough, um, there's some invisible boundaries there that you're going to bounce off of, which is exactly what happens. So when I jumped in, and that's when you see where you land, it's wherever the Sino is. You don't know, you can't see his screen, so or the, the Sino screen, so you don't know where you're going to land. You just assume they know where to put the Sino. Well, he put it on top kind of low, so I bounced right off the towers on top of an Astro House, which isn't that big, so it doesn't have a huge radius. And I just started flying in some direction, right? So I'm by myself. It's um, <laughs> I'm totally drifting really fast <laughs> off the Astro House. I'm looking around, and in pops a couple of initiative scouts right when I started bouncing. And I'm thinking, uh-oh, I better... I better... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I better hurry. Oh, that's so good. 
So here's my mistake. And this is why I'm going to tell you guys to do this. So then I target the Astro House and I'm like, approach, 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 approach. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, why aren't I slowing down? Uh, I'm still drifting out to the edge of the Astro House. Here's the problem. When you approach a structure, you approach the boundary of the structure, not the center of it. Mm -hmm. So what I had done is I turned on my uh, propulsion to go to the edge of the border that's safe. So I was actually bounced exactly and flying. The yeah, and I was putting on the yeah, engines to exactly go even faster. Opposite. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, so it took me a second to realize like something's not working. At first I thought the game was broken and cheating. But then I was like, okay, that can't be right. What's going on here? And then it occurred to me, I'm going to the edge. So if you bounce off of an Astro House in an expensive ship, do not approach the station. That will put you at the border where you don't want to be. So uh, what you do instead, and this is my advice to you, is approach the Sino, because that's a single point on the grid, and you will fly towards the Sino instead of flying out towards the border of the Astro House. So initiative is sitting in system. Uh, these are scouts, and my Titan alone is drifting out into deep space. <laughs> and I'm thinking, this is, this is not going to end well. So I realized my mistake quick enough, so I start going towards the Sino, but I'm still, it took a while before I drifted out to the absolute edge of the Astro House. And I don't know if you know this, and I saw it mostly in slow motion, but the tethering goes from a blue to an orange, to a very faded orange before it snaps and you're no longer tethered. And I, I saw all those stages as my life was flashing before me. Um, but yeah, so that's, uh, what happened there. So double click in space towards the Astro house works too. Yeah, that's true. Um, uh, but what, what I'm, what the new rule for me was at that point was, uh, if you bounce off a Sino, approach the Sino or approach the ship that is on the Sino, but, uh, do not approach the structure. It will put you at the border, not the center of the structure. So there, there you go. Or even better, put your hands in a in a person who knows how to put a sign over on a station. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I I thought I mean, twice about as... my vouch after that. No, just kidding. <laughs> I was like, dude. He's like, it's all right. You're all right. And that's what kills me. I've had people do this to me. It's not just him. There are other people. They're like, you're okay. Don't worry. You're all right. You're okay. And they economize their speech, which makes me nervous because they're saying like, you're okay. You're fine. And I'm thinking. I'm not fine. I know I'm not fine. You know, your reassuring me is not working. <laughs> so, uh, but it didn't get tense at all. We we had a good laugh about it. It was very exhilarating. And then I got back to Astro House's uh, tether and I jumped out and the rest was history. So it's fine. Uh, okay, enough about that. Um, we have a lot to go through, so I'm not going to go through too much of this, but just know that a couple of Goon Swarm Titans fell already in this conflict to Snuffed and Northern Coalition and KVN. And there's been a few battles. I think I saw, yeah, Hell was taken out by Goon Swarm. It belonged to Horde. Uh, that was taken out in, well, it's a ratting one in the Horde's home area of Kalevala Expanse. Uh, a Goon Swarm Hell was destroyed in period basis, so they're just trading um, supers in, in, you know, we're, we're tr Rat ratting areas. We're we're, tr we're we're trading idiots and people who haven't uh, set them set, who haven't trading. squared their stuff away. That's essentially what's happening right now. Trading idiots. I love that. Uh, yeah. So in other news, you have um, fraternity entering what looks like a coming war. This uh, message from Noros was to prepare for battle. So we'll see what happens. What what happens there? Um. This is going to get big. All right, we're going to drag in some guests now. Let me uh, let me see if I can grab Zesty. We'll start there. Who shall we abduct? What's that? Who shall we abduct? You know what I want to do? I want to. I I totally want to do this. But we'll be right back after uh, this message with uh, a talk with Trigger Happy. Yeah.
So then I can grab trigger happy and drag him in or zesty. But I think Zesty has uh, walked away. So we'll give him a second. Hello. Uh, oh, there you are. How's it going? Yourself. Do you go by Zesty? Is that what you're best known as? Most people know me as. Okay. Okay, Trigger Happy. Um, for those that don't know, we'll do a little bit of history on Trigger Happy, but uh, I'd like to welcome Zesty first. How are you doing? Pretty good. Uh, it's my first time on TIS actually, so yeah, something new. Piece of cake. Oh, uh, no. This is the most casual environment. Uh, let me just fix my cameras. Hey, tell us about uh, yourself first. Let's start with that. Yeah, so I guess I'll start with my Eve history. Um, I've been playing this game for about since. Well, I made my first tune back in 2014, but I was really um, too young back then to really appreciate the game or play it properly. So I quit and then I uh, started back in 2016. My first character back then was uh, named Zesty Memes. That's where I get my name Zesty from. <laughs> and like, you know, I did the normal thing, joined Horde, and I didn't really like that. Uh, it was just like, you know, being in a block. Um, so I went out to Losec, joined Wangs, and then, you know, went into Wormholes. Um, my first real corp I was in, or where I stayed there for a significant amount of time, was uh, Shackle Squad. And oh, yeah. originally, when we moved there, we were in a um, five four, and then I quickly became a director there, and we grew quite into a powerhouse. Actually, um, for quite a while, Shackle Squad was one of the top uh, wormhole PvP corps in wormhole space or C uh, five five space, and that was a um, really good time for me. I learned a lot. That's why I got into like multi-boxing, uh, kind of started my interest in FCing, um, and really learned a lot. I had the CEO, uh, his name is Richard Salmania, or Salmania Salu, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, he really taught me and mentored me um, to be a good player. Sadly, that kind of ended on bad terms. Um, and after that, I went and joined my friends and uh, they had no one because like all of Wormhole Space was connected on Tweetfleet in the Wormhole channel. So I met a lot of friends there and I got picked up by a full broadside. And we lived in a C2 Nolsec and we just did uh, like Denner gang. We did like 100 man Lokis out of uh, the wormhole and just ganked riders all day. Um, just Nano PvP. And from there, um, this was really when the drones campaign was starting to go, kick up. A little bit before Scooby Self formed, actually, I'd say about six months. And we decided to all get, you know, hyper supers, et cetera. And we started farming drones together. Um, and we flew with hard knocks a lot, actually. So, you know, we we're farming cardboard edge, pretty much all our drones and getting a ton of super frags. Like, you know, I think it was in the hundreds um, for how much we killed hundreds of billions and, you know, hundreds of supers and carriers and everything in between. Yeah. That was actually my favorite time in EVE because there's nothing else really like it in EVE anymore or. Um, yeah. That must have been like yeah. har har whale harpooning, you know on some ship at sea yeah yeah like we, we lived literally just lived on ops um kept our man with the wormhole and we brought them out for ops like you know scan a chain go do stuff but other than that you know we just keep our uh, supers logged off in space you know we'd have sinos logged off everywhere same with sabers we have spies all over the place and as soon as someone started ratting or doing something it would just be on and kill them instantly like it was quite insane um that we never we didn't die more, but they were just, I guess, too incompetent to really contest us or try to stop us. They you just so, they just weren't prepared. Yeah. Uh, they were they're no. like, hey, this place is supposed to be like totally vacant, and here are some wormholers like chewing up everybody in sight. Yeah. Okay. And so then, oh, the, yeah, go ahead. sorry, yeah, go on. No, no, you go on. And then, yeah. And you know, uh, scary self started forming up. You know, they're doing their stuff down. Oh, what was it? Nina and his mother with um, Manifesto, and then they kind of kicked off into the try thing. Then they uh, started fighting drones. One thing went to another. Um, I ended up in School Yourself, 
that was a great time in here for me. And then I left to join Hard Knocks and I was there for quite a while. Um, and I think I was there for when we got evicted. I'd been in Hard Knocks for about like two months at that time. So, you know, join Hard Knocks, get fucking evicted by all of NOLSEC. That was a funny experience. Well, the way like, McLeod would put it, it was just uh, him and a few friends, right? <laughs> yeah, just me and a uh, thousand of my best friends, all there on comms, working together. Yeah, and I had like, it, it kind of sucked because I had um, a bunch of capitals, like all just logged off in space for months because uh, I just felt a little bit lazy and had all my assets in them. I eventually got those out. Um, we moved to like a seat in Norsec. That was a lot of fun. Then we moved back to 5.5 Space, back into Rage after a few months. Mm-hmm. And that's where I started FCing more. Uh, and then about the same time was when uh, just before the frat and test nip was broken, mm-hmm. I started doing like, you know, a few fleets here and there. And then I reached out to Nora. I was like, hey, can I come FC for you, dude? He's like, oh, I didn't really know me. He's like, uh, okay, you can app to the F. You can come in. We'll see how you go. Um, and that's where I really started learning to FC. Cause in in uh, fraternity know, proper? You know, or... but yeah, I was in uh, the, the therapist. Norbert okay. Norris just gave me, invited an old corporate of mine. Um, and then I started to learn FC, uh, learn FCing there properly because Elo kind of took me under his wing. Mm. And there was no one really else in the English side of frat that was able to do anything uh, really. But like, you know, it would be Elo running the fleet and FCing really. And then it'd be me in the background, multi boxing 10 accounts doing all the scouting, running the capital fleets, the super fleets. Oh. And I was, I'd say, kind of my peak in EVE. I've kind of yeah. taken a bit easier since then. That was just eight months of uh, being on every day, fighting a war. And I really picked up a lot on Elo, and he taught me a lot. So that was great. Did he teach you how to talk um, fast? <laughs> he did, actually. I do talk very fast. And that's, yeah, sorry. He's good at that. No, no, it's not you. Yeah. It's just that when he says, yeah. he'll say something 20 times, because he wants to make sure everybody heard it, but he sa- he says it so fast, it doesn't take any extra time for him. <laughs> yeah, you know, I say it twenty times, and I take two seconds. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. But when you um, when when time is of the essence, and like you need to, you know, you need to send, you need to uh, communicate uh, like vital information. Like you need to learn how to like communicate real quick, like Zesty does. Yeah, I am terrible at it, by the way. <laughs> It, it kind of sucks too. It's a double-edged sword because uh, I start speaking fast, and it's, you know, stuff's going on. My words get slurred, or I don't. I don't. Uh, yeah. What happens is, I I say things faster, but then I'm thinking of new things at the same time. It's like you know, I'll be saying one thing, and then I would have thought of a better thing, and yeah. I start trying to say the better thing at the same time, and then you know, it just gets confusing. So it's something I have to kind of yeah, watch out for. Tell me about it. I just said like the most violent systems in cloud ring. You know, it meant the uh, the clusters because you're reading and in- interpreting information while you're talking, and sometimes uh, uh, some words you know fall out of your receiving end and into your delivery end when they're not supposed to. But um, so your so your situation was in fraternity. You had a lot of experience under Elo Knight. What happened after that? So um, it really ended uh, when you know. When there was this one timer where we got like 59 hubs, we had uh, RF'd and no, we got the keeps that are enough to uh, RF'd in 03 TAC. You know, we formed like 240 supers for it in Titans, but test didn't come for that. And they RF'd 59 hub, I hubs, some of our most vital ones. Jeez. Like after that, we're just like, okay, it's been eight months. It's not letting up. Uh, let's just kind of end it here. And then they worked out a deal. Um, we evac'd and there was nothing for real me to really do. Right. So you were there? Fred had just moved. Sorry, you were there for this. is very important because this shows, like, uh, I think, a really good veteran status. Is you were there for the um, rage invasion on the business end of Pando's, you know, fleet. So you were lo- you lost there, and then you also lost in fraternity. You saw like the uh, uh, the retreat or the decline of uh, fraternity after that war. So those are two times in in very important moments where you had to figure out how to withdraw. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, I, I don't want to claim any of the um, 
planning or that wasn't my work. That was Norris and Elo who planned all that. So that's not really sure. No, but you were there for that. Yeah. I was part of helping or or that there. So yeah. And then once we evax, you know, got to um, what's the system? Moved like regions like three times before they got to uh, Oasa, just because they had well, rental agreements and all that, and had to move people out. Um, and then I pretty much saw what Trigger Happy was doing in Tribute, and I was like, hey, this looks fun. Um, being independent, much more small scale, because I was kind of tired of flying eight munins for eight months, uh, a lot of flights, 10% tie dye, and all that. So it was kind of, yeah, it's like, oh, I just want to get out of this. And so I headed up, joined, he did a uh, hit up Kenda and asked to join. He was like, yeah, sure. And then it just went from there. Um, Trigger Happy has like, uh, has been through three stages of life so far. So originally it was Kenda's Alliance and it was going quite well, really well, actually. Um, we were fighting banders, try everyone. We were like dunking literally on everyone and it was really great content. Then Kenda unfortunately had, uh, some IRL issues that prevented him from playing the game. And so uh, someone else stepped up. He passed CEO over to a guy named Mark. At the same time, we had uh, three Snuff Corps joined um, because, you know, Snuff had disbanded at the same time. And for the first month or two, it was really good. Had a lot of amazing FCs and content creators. But in the end, when you have like that many good people, uh, egos start clashing and it just devolves into drama so eventually what happened was the snuff corps left um they were going back to snuff and then uh, a few other corps left just because of a bit of drama and this was about three four months after mark had taken over this is a almost kill try so that was you know kenda that was kenda trig there was mark trig and then I took over when the Snuff Corps left because we needed a CEO change. Um, and I was stepped it, up and started taking over and doing everything. Was it by choice yeah. or was there some or was there some shoulder, tapping on the shoulder saying, um, need to step aside? It was by choice, really. Um, we were prepared to shut down the Alliance, but I was like, hey, let's, give it a, let's give it a shot, see what we can do. If it doesn't work out, we'll just end it on, you know, end it and see how it goes. Um, but it worked out really well, you know, after the ex- exodus of all the corps, we had, uh, I think we were only getting like, you know, 15, 20 dudes on a ping. Um, but we had these two really good fights, like two weeks after all the corps had left. These were in CXN over one of our Astros at Banders had RF and on both fights, we were fighting FXR and Banders and they, you know, had, uh, 60 faction battleships with like our 30 or 40. And we absolutely dunked them on both timers. I think we killed like 60 or 70 faction battleships and lost like four over these two timers. And that just uh, reinvigorated the alliance and wow. got everything going, like everyone active and going again. After that, Trip has been on an uh, upward spiral of activity and doing stuff. Against yeah. the odds. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so Trigger Happy is still around. Um, they were actually given the most influential organization of last year. We gave that to him, I think, right before Kendar left. Um, but we were, this is one of the more controversial decisions because we have a meeting and it used to be me that would pick like the most influential, but then we opened it up to kind of a group to kind of like decide on a group. And that was one of the decisions um, that we kind of couldn't agree on like see, everybody has different ideas on what is influential and you know who are the movers and shakers in the creative uh, the creative i guess mutators of the game so we gave it to trigger happy the alliance because they kind of um well because we didn't give it to skill you before and skill you had created this independent kind of block that lit the imaginations of a lot of pilots who wanted to PvP, but not without, not with the giant infrastructure that came with the bigger alliances. So it was kind of like people who were more into the pure fighting of it. But since we didn't give it to skill you, here was somebody else who was breaking it open, Kendar and um, Liber- or Trigger Happy. And so we thought like, 
you know, they'll we'll give it to them this year to kind of uh, show the innovation and the bravery of going to, to to going you know into a smaller arena and performing really really well in it because you guys are quite good uh, for your size. Yeah, well, I didn't even know we'd actually got that award. Uh, yeah, guys. it was a little controversial because um, I forget who else was on it. And it was and we didn't publicize it very much. We'll go back and put like trophies on the wall, and you guys will you guys will be there. Um, but Kendar had left right after that because I think he left in didn't he leave like in January or some time or do you remember when he around left? then sounds about right yeah. I can't remember the exact date but around then sounds right right and so we didn't know what was going to happen with Trigger Happy it's gone through some phases as you said there's like three chapters to Trigger Happy this is the third and you're the CEO now and this yes, is correct. right and this is what's interesting to me now Kendar is coming back. Uh, I don't know what's drawn him back. Maybe his real life is cleared up. Maybe it's the excitement of what's going on right now. What did Kendar, uh, what's what's he saying to you about what his plans are? Because we heard, oh. can I set this one? Let me set this one up. I heard that he was coming back because he's always wanted to fight Test. Uh, so he was going to fight them on the on behalf of Goon Swarm. So the question is, is Kendar coming back to Goon Swarm? Yeah, so the night Kenda came back and started talking about being active in EVE again, he was uh, <laughs> quite drunk. Um, he was like, you know, talking to me. He's like, oh, if I come back, I'm going to join Goons if this war kicks off. And uh, he made a bunch of, you know, said, he apparently kind of told a bunch of people he's coming back to join Goons for the Legacy War um, or whatever you want to call it, tech, uh, Legacy versus Delve or Goons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then, you know, a few days later, he's like, oh, is that see? I was fucking <laughs> drunk during that night, dude. I, I don't want to go. And uh, he's like, I want to stay in Trig. He's like, oh, okay. That was a surprise, surprise to me. Um, oh, so you I'm were surprised too? <laughs> I was surprised too, yeah. He's like, he'd made it you know, quite clear that he wanted to do that. But yeah. So then um, Kendar is back. He's not going to fight on behalf of Goons. He's going back to Trigger Happy. And is he taking back over? How's that work out? Uh, no, he's not. So we we talked to him about this because you know, um, obviously, something quite important to sort before he fully comes back and is active. Um, but he's pretty much just happy. I won't like say any of the details of the conversation. But he's pretty much just happy because my second in command, Adisha, um, Adisha Holdem, we run the alliance mostly, just the us two. Us two. Um, he's mm-hmm. pretty much happy to just sit under us. Um, and do fleet you know as long as we're sticking to the original vision we share much of the same goals of what we want to do uh in eve i don't think there's like you know much conflict What's the, or you know what is different, the uh, different or, views original vision of trigger happy what is it so pretty much just being an independent alliance we able to do whatever the fuck we want really like mm-hmm. no no team up with blocks no Joining Black, like we work with whoever we want, really. Like, you know, if you want to work with goons one day, or if you want to work with Horde one day, it doesn't matter. We can work with anyone. As long as there's no agreements or, yeah, being an independent or second entity that can fight really anyone. Well, that's interesting because it's an interesting time for that. Uh, you have, again, uh, Kendar, Trigger Happy, and the, you know, Kendar's work uh, with uh, Liberty Squad, which is a successful SIG basically for the Imperium. There's some like, the, there's the um, old uh, loyalties and then there's the new freedoms of just doing whatever the heck you want with Trigger Happy. Uh, what is Kendar, Zesty, you and uh, Trigger Happy going to do at this time when there's a huge war brewing? So I can't really say anything, but we'll just see how it develops. And we'll go from there. I imagine we'll do something. Uh, it, it will be a lot of content going on down there. So I imagine we won't get involved in some way. Yeah. Well, because you guys are, where are you now? What part of the world are you living in? So we're living in Tribute. Um, we own half a Tribute. We share it with uh, Toilet Paper. They're really our only blue in Eve. Uh, we work with them together quite a lot, you know. That gives us range into you know, pure blind, being or valid, silent, and low sec. So there's a lot we can do um, in this area. All right, bringing in uh, 
my friend Spod. Oh, he's gonna clam up now and not say anything because he's moving to Venal. Hello. <laughs> hey, I wanted. To... Are you moving to Venal, right? God damn it! That was a secret. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, seriously, considering it, like, um, I'm off work for the next two weeks, so that's gonna be my period where I figure out what the hell my corpulence alorp thing will be doing um and hold on let me turn off this tv fan all right yeah and while you... Reno is pretty high on that priority list while you do that i have to make a huge correction i kept saying liberty squad and it wasn't liberty squad it was space violence and sorry about that that was a big mistake so the sig that i was talking about Kendar formed was space violence. It's the one with the red fist up in the air. Um, so let me correct that. Sorry about that. Uh, okay, so Zesty, you were saying that you're up in Venal, is that right? In that area? or Zesty? Sorry, I was using the wrong key to talk. My bad. Oh, it's okay. That's too many. Um, so we're up in the left-hand side of Tribute. I don't know if you heard anything I said beforehand, but um, yeah, so we just live in tribute because it gives us, it's a good spot, right? There's a lot of uh, alliances around us in Vale, Venal, Pure Blind. Uh, yeah. We have a nice jump bridge, uh, jump bridge network up to Horde Space and Kavala. You know, we have mm -hmm. Darkseid down in Geminet. There's a lot, lot going on in this space, especially in Vale. Um, yeah. It's a lot of different alliances. Of, yeah. I was thinking, I also think uh, the, the current state of Veil can be attributed a lot to Trigger Happy. I think it gave people a lot of confidence to go out and do their own thing. And yep. we show that it does work. You can live outside of the blocks. And well, that's what we were trying to achieve. Yeah. I think, I think like. a lot of what, uh, I think a lot of what Trigger and, um, you know, previously, uh, skill you kind of uh, showed was that it was possible. And so it kind of, it was almost like an inspiration for a lot of the, uh, groups that uh, are currently in like tribute area right mm -hmm. so yeah you guys uh you guys should feel proud like you know for uh uh you know inspiring all of those groups to say you know what i don't need to be part of the uh blue donor or be part of like this you know diapole of uh or this uh you know the, this uh you know two distinctive groups in nullsec Mm -hmm. And actually forge your own, you know, your own destiny. It was awesome. So something from the chat, pew pew stuff, just said, will Trigger Happy give a couch to the losers of the war? And <laughs> uh, we, have a, we have a very open policy with this, actually. Um, if you're a small group or a small alliance so wanting to start out, we're very happy to try help you get space within some area. You know, there's space in Pure Blind and Declan right now. Uh, there's probably space in Vale somewhere if you're good enough to take it. But yeah, we're always looking for more smaller alliances um, or any alliance really that wants to leave the blocks to come out here and give it a shot on their own. It's not easy. Um, you have to be, have a certain level of competence to do it because you're on your own. You don't have anyone to hold your hand. You pretty much lose all your ISK. Like really have no alliance income at this scale. There's no well, real way to make ISK unless you have renters. Is this area the new... I hate to put it this way because it's not quite right, but is it like the new Providence? Is it the new area to go to to kind of get uh, acquainted with Nullsec with some independence? Um, I guess you could say that, yeah. Not not quite the same level of probably we'll still fight all the other alliances here. You know, we won't go and evict any smaller alliance here. Maybe it's more like a, a, thunder, a Thunderdome than a... Yeah, I think that's a better word for it, Thunderdome. Yeah. All right, Spot. So that's what uh, Sorry, that's what the advice that I was given that dragged me up here. Yeah. If uh, so, just back on the PP thing. Yeah. He said, "Will Trigger Happy give a couch to the losers of the war? If Goons lose this war, I would fucking love them to come to the, back up to the north and pure blind venal uh, fade anywhere there. But that's right next to me, and I'd love to fight them. So, uh, yeah. Well, you don't have to wait for them." Because apparently a lot of people are going to fight them. If uh, it all turns mm -hmm. out the way it's predicted, there should be a lot of different different faces going down. I, again, uh, Naros had said there's going to be a big war. Get ready for war. 
I can't imagine yep. he's talking about anything else. Um, Billy talked yesterday about, uh, I mean, just the way that he had his energy, it very much seems like he's intent on at some point participating in this war. Um, and of course, you know, the snuff and NC dot horde are already kind of attacking. I, I, now nobody said they're invading. Um, but there just seems to be a lot of energy, doesn't there? Yeah. Well, it's very sudden too, right? Like, oh, we're attacking goons and delve in a fountain. Uh, so this generates a lot of hype, a lot of hype uh, just by saying that. Yeah. yeah. So, so, we'll see. so we'll see how that was. All right, cool. Well, it's nice mm -hmm. to meet you, Zessie. Thanks for coming by and uh, giving us an update and clearing that up. It's nice to meet you and hear your story too. Yeah, sure. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Spod, watch out I'm for him. Find you later. He's going to eat your lunch. Mm -hmm. All, right. all right, guys. I'll I'll my Good luck. Yeah, all right. Catch you, dude. See you around. Right. All right. All right. Next, uh, we're going to have um, Ashtarathi, and I'm going to actually bring in Chappie and Dutch Gunner. Hey, guys. Uh, are you here? Ashtarathi, Chappie, Dutch Gunner. Could bring you all in at once. Uh, yes, I'm here. Howdy, howdy. All right. Uh, Chappie, stick around. Uh, we gotta, we're going to talk about you in just a minute. Um, Ashtarathi, we first want a, a quick update. Wow, let me fix the video because that goes nuts. I have to figure out how to do this a little bit better. Let's do the trig update, if you don't mind. Sure. Uh, yeah, before I begin, I want to say that uh, one of my goals is that we're going to be doing kind of a weekly update that will be part of TIS. I'm already working with people to kind of allow this to be part of a normal production chain. But in the meantime, all I have is kind of this week's update to ramble off to you guys. So without further ado, um, this week has been mostly one that is focused around like confusion and questions for the Triglavian forces and the Eden Com forces. Uh, the week prior, we had a dual uh, liminality, a final liminality victory in Nalvula and uh, Sakenta. Uh, Sakenta is, of course, very critical as it's two jumps from Jita, and I now only refer to it as the content pit. Um, and those two victories were uh, really big. It doubled the number of final liminalities. But then this week, we had two systems that we expected to progress into liminality, but failed to do so. Our expectation is that G5 Yellow Stars and Blue Stars. Uh, the oh, We've both gotten O1 and a BO, I believe, star to progress into liminality. However, in this case, we received two stars uh, that we would have expected to have gone into liminality. Both of them are yellow stars, just like Vale and uh, Nalvula. But Aranon and Netsalik both failed to progress and became Triglavian minor victories. Uh, this has caused uh, mass confusion within the Triglavian forces, as many people are uh, range from disheartened to intrigued by the clear lack of understanding of what it, all it takes to make this to to make these sites go into liminality. Um, what's, uh, however, these minor victories also we've been developing a lot of understanding about these systems. They tend, they seem to be the best systems to make money in because they have, they uh, can be in high sec and they have the emerging conduits and forward posts, which are uh, formerly used to be really good at making money. Uh, earlier, they nerfed those sites by making them uh, happen every 10 minutes instead of every minute. But now, uh, minor victories can have anywhere from two to four of these sites in it at one time. And so since each of them have a 10 minute timer, a team of two to three people can roll these things and make re very good ISK, somewhere between anywhere from 40 to 140 million ISK per hour per person uh, for a team of up, uh, up to three people, uh, just depending on how you arrange yourselves, what ships you use and, and how efficiently you run them and whether or not you salvage and which side you're on, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so, so lots and lots of questions come this week as we're continuing to try to understand uh, all of this stuff. Um, we would like to get more information from Zori and the Triglavians about what to do, but uh, this week has been a lot of minor victories and otherwise not progressing. 
Um, however, I believe that Edencom did get a couple of fortresses, so whatever. Um, on the organizational side, we've released a guide, a uh, Kybernaut guide that can be found on kybernaut.space, which is for all of your invasion news. We have kybernaut.space slash invasion, which keeps track of all of the different, or sorry, invasions, which keeps track of all of our different invasions. Um, this is useful by both sides. Uh, it gets updated by hand, and we do have an API available for those of you who are interested in receiving this information via JSON format. Uh, you can contact Ashrathi or uh, Isabel, who's also known as Carnage Rose, uh, to get more information about that. But um, And we are now uh, pushing this information to EVI maps. So you can see the state of invasions on EVI as well. Um, in addition to this, we, like I said, we have a new manual, the Kybernaut Guide, that contains all of the uh, rat information for the various empires. So all four empires, their rats, what E-War they do, what tank they have, what damage they do, what can expect from them. Um, and we have a breakdown of how invasions roll, um, how to get involved, especially on the Kybernaut side. However, it's got a lot of useful information for both teams. Um, and I just I strongly recommend that anybody who's interested in getting in uh, do this stuff. Uh, the more you do your prep work, the more successful you are. Um, it's really about making sure that your overview is set up correctly, making sure that you're in the correct channels in game and in Discord, uh, and preferably going to one of these minor victories and running some sites for a little while to fix your standings. So that way, when you go into the actual invasion itself, you don't just get blapped by the wrong team because that can cause cascading issues. Because if you get attacked by the enemy team, by the like, if you don't fix your standings with the, with the trig, and so you go in there, and, and let's say even that you shoot the trig, uh, and then the trig shoot you, or they don't even need to shoot you. Actually, there, there's a good example of this. Uh, Gojess and I landed on a site, or landed on a roaming pack. They finished killing the final Edencom rat, and then turned on her, because her standings hadn't been fixed enough. And so because they turned on her and attacked her, then when I repped her, then they turned on me. And because somebody repped me, they turned on him too. So three people that were all technically positive with Edencom, or with uh, the Trig, got attacked, and two of us got killed. Uh, CCP actually reimbursed that because this the 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 way that standings works when it comes to Logi and it being like spread out when it um, is currently something that I know that CCP is investigating. But I'm just saying, like for everyone's sake, fix your standings. Go run, you know anywhere from one to a dozen or so of these um, uh, Edencom minor victory uh, forward posts, get your standings fixed uh, before heading on into invasions. Either way. Yeah. Um, the, in other, what? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. In slightly related news, uh, the lightning strike event has now started and we are about a week into it. Uh, they are occurring in all uh, low security and certain null security regions. Uh, they are pretty fun. I recommend do that, doing them in a small team, somewhere between three to six people. Um, in cruisers and battle cruisers, the, we did it with uh, VNIs that were relatively successful. Um, uh, I did it in a vagabond that was very successful. Uh, be prepared for PvP. There are plenty of scrams and stuff within these sites, and it's all in dangerous territories. And um, unlike previous site, uh, 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 event sites, these can escalate, but when they escalate, when you get to the escalation, as soon as you warp to the escalation, the beacon spawns, just like a faction warfare mission or other faction warfare site or something like that, or or even the invasion sites, right? So as soon as somebody warps to one of these sites, it appears as a beacon in space, but that tr is true about escalations too. So that means people can hunt down guys in the escalations, and once the escalation has started, people can go into them easily to disrupt them. Uh, after... Uh, there's a first escalation, and then if you go to the second escalation, the second escalation is called uh, the signal source, in which you go to a minor conduit-looking thing um, where a whole bunch of Trigovian rats come out. And the, you actually do not get Edencom uh, loot or anything out of this. Uh, you instead just get lots and lots of like red loot and other stuff that you would expect from a Triglavian site. Um, the Edencom loot itself comes specifically from the caches. So there's two, there's kind of two prizes. The final boss rat, uh, which is a, uh, a, a rogue drone battleship in the first two sites, uh, that will drop 
uh, a certain amount of, I believe, the pieces to build some of the Edencom uh, ships and weapons. But the big prize is as soon as you kill the battleship, a, a secret cache spawns, and you blow up the cache, and that cache is what has uh, the the blueprints and the special items and the cool stuff like that. Sure. Uh, this has been, unlike previous events, this has now been really, really good ish per hour uh, just by doing it. We had a team of seven people, um, including one person that was just running the stuff out of Losec in a, in a Sinesis. And we did it for three hours and got 100 million ish per hour per person. So 300 million ish payout per person, 2.1, 2.2 billion total in payout uh, that we were able to turn into cash in less than 24 hours. Uh, which was really good, uh, and by cash I mean ISK, obviously. But um, you know, so a lot of the problems of previous events have been kind of solved here. Although, obviously, as the event goes on, profitability changes, uh, the things become more accessible. Um, but also, you know, as more blueprints come out, then the materials that are coming out will be worth more. That being said, I will warn people that the appraisals that you get when you run these sites is ridiculous. It'll be like. Hey, by the way, this can's worth 2.5 billion, and you're like, what? And the reason why is because some of the stuff was dropped, like, real, like during the, uh, or during the lightning strike, or sorry, the the gathering storm event. Some things were given out, um, and so there was very limited versions of certain items, and so those were traded at really high value. And now they're dropping in mass, and so when you get 30 of something that used to be a lot of million, now the whole thing looks like it's worth 1.2 billion. When it's really only worth, you know, maybe 300 million, but that's okay. Um, every, things are still pretty darn valuable in those sites. Um, I don't remember how much longer there is in that event now, but uh, it is worth noting that this event is directly tied into the invasion systems. These rats, uh, the NPCs, are sent by uh, the road drones are sent by the Triglavians. So while we don't believe that this is going to directly relate to the actual like capturing of systems state of invasions. This is almost like a side thing that is in the same theme as the Triglavian invasions, uh, not part of the actual feature set itself. Uh, you know, that that remains to be seen. And uh, it's all pretty exciting. Uh, uh, today, I also wanted to, I want to try to highlight, because one of the biggest things I really like about invasions is uh, the fact that heroes are born. So previously, I've talked about like Emma and the work that she has done. This week, I want to highlight uh, Kaldari Isu. Kaldari Isu, who is also known as Yavanis, um, has been a long friend of mine. He comes from uh, the Kaldari or Convocation of Imperians and Galente Faction Warfare. Before that, he came from like the the heyday of Faction Warfare when we did like really big si system sieges, and especially in this last week, he has been bringing forth to bear that experience to uh, leading fleets and holding things together for so long that uh, I've actually seen other people tell him to stop and go rest because he's clearly like like doing too much. So, uh, you know, these guys are leading, you know, m doing more than a full-time job of leading these fleets in order to take these systems and fight over over this stuff. So there's some significant conflict and and lots of people putting in a lot of effort but Kaldari Isu is a good example of somebody who, um, just the uh, just a couple weeks ago, he was my wormhole manager right as we were getting evicted. And the reason why he wasn't able to deal with the eviction is because he was being a field medic for one of the riots that were going on. So this guy has had a lot going on in his life. He's a really busy dude. And the amount of dedication and um, just passion he puts into this community and making things awesome for us uh, is really appreciated. That being said, since this is my first one of these kinds of updates, and I really want to highlight more of these people, uh, Buddhist priestess or princess, sorry, um, pointed out to me that we also need to, uh, who is also, by the way, done a fantastic job, uh, and I'm sure I'm going to have a whole highlight on them soon, but uh, they wanted me to bring up Amala uh, Oriki, who has been one of the major Zeta Fleet FCs, especially uh, during our earlier operations. Uh, Zeta Fleet is our is the Kybernauts or the Triglavian efforts more sophisticated, quote unquote, nullsec driven, PvP focused, Abaddon uh, uh, centric uh, doctrine? 
uh, as opposed to Swarm Fleet, which is more kind of ad hoc arm, uh, you know, just low tier T1 cruisers uh, and battle cruisers. Uh, so Zeta Fleet is kind of our tryhard fleet, uh, and um, they have been leading this. Uh, Amala has been leading this this fleet, not even as an experienced FC, has been uh, you know stepping up to the plate and was one of the pivotal people in the Raravas taking. So two great people who are both relatively new uh, in the actual act of being a fleet commander, both stepping up and using this as an opportunity to take the plunge and become you know, paragons of their forces. So I appreciate all of this, and I hope to be able to highlight more uh, awesome people in the, in the weeks to come. Um, finally, I'm actually talking with Edencom people right now. Uh, I hope tomorrow, maybe, to uh, have a longer chat with one of the, uh, with a few people that have been very involved in the Edencom Defense Initiative to talk about their experience. And uh, because I think that what's, what I find most interesting is that we're seeing uh, a lot of angst and a lot of concern coming from both sides uh, and questions about reward and what's worth it and, and what's at stake and who has what advantages. So I think that there's an awesome broader conversation to be had and I awesome. hope to be having it soon. Thanks. I just got back uh, after going and working out for 30 minutes and I heard, and finally, <laughs> so, fantastic. No, that was yeah, good. I'm glad you were able to get your laundry done and, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. Totally. Uh, yeah, uh, he kidding. A little when it comes to this. It's uh, it's and tough. In to, all honesty, that was really, yeah. really that, that was, was super uh, thorough. Yeah, that was a great kind of thorough, that was super thorough, man. Yeah. I had one one question, Ash, uh, and that is like we're seeing dots all over the place in Empire space. This really started out in Amarian space, didn't it? So Amar has more systems than anywhere else. Um, the vast majority of early systems did start in Amar, although it spread out. Um, it is my understanding that the selection of systems is controlled more by uh, the rules and the AI than rather than like CCP hand picking them. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I thought the, there might be some lore reason for it, like drifters, you know, attacked Amar, not not anywhere else. So I was wondering if there, there was some. I, yes, of course, there, of course, there's plenty of spooky reasons why why and and they've called this out specifically in. In the last couple of lore articles that have come out, there we've had two uh, world news and one uh, scope video since then. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like Edencom putting extra forces in the MR is uh, one of the things that's been noted. Uh, but the problem is, is that especially when it comes to reading tea leaves like that, uh, another problem is, is that the MR forces are just really, really good at fighting Triglavian forces because tracking disruptors stop their disintegrators. And uh, newts shut off. Most people don't realize this, but newts work on these rats, and it stops all of their secondary functions. So all of the Triglavians' remote reps, their newts, their Ewar is all reliant on cap. And so the Triglavian or the Amar forces can basically just dismantle Triglavian forces. So even if no one else is in system, the uh, Amar rats will just grind the Triglavian rats into victory. Wow. So, so there's talk about rebalancing some of these rats so that way that doesn't happen as much. So the reason why I bring that up is that I don't know when, when CCP kind of earmarks, hey, Edencom and the Amar, Amar has had too much attention. I don't know if that means that they're going to get nerfed because Edencom's been providing too much quote unquote funding or whatever. And so they're going to defund them a little bit to give the other forces some strength or what, however they're going to justify the nerf. Or is it because there's actually like, something going on with the Triglavians targeting uh, the Amar specifically. Hmm. All right. Well, thanks uh, for all of that. Can you stick around for this next part? I want to talk to Chappie here. Um, it's going to be a big fight for him. How are you doing, Chappie? Uh, doing good. I appreciate you letting me come on. Yeah, of course. Um, I don't know how to approach this very easily. Yeah. May, may I introduce this topic too? Yeah, since Chappie's yeah. In front of mine? Sure, yeah. absolutely. Okay, yeah. So, so Chappie here. Um, we met him because he started showing up to our uh, just our public fleets, 
And uh, this dude is one of the most positive guys that I know, right? Like this guy is just super into it. He loves jump freighters. He loves industry. Like this guy talks about hauling like a kid would talk about his train set. Like this guy is so into Eve, it's awesome. Um, however, this last year he's had a string of just terrible fucking tragedies, man. So in the middle of one of our streams, he gets informed that his house is burning down. Oh my God. And like a lot of his stuff is being destroyed. And so like he wasn't able to play Eve for a while. He didn't have funding. We had to do a we had to do a GoFundMe to help him like stabilize and take care of things. And then he's taking care of his mom and his mom has a stroke. Jeez. So now he's dealing with all of that. And then immediately after that, within a few weeks after that, he gets uh, news from his doctor that his cancer has come back. Oh, and, so, and, and so he's been given uh, a moratorium. And uh, he knows that while he does have oh, a little over a year to live or a, over a year to live, a lot of that won't work as like good quality Eve time. And with everything else going on, he doesn't know how much he can afford internet let alone the ability to actually play the game and so uh today is his birthday happy birthday chappy happy birthday chappy. um and so we kind of all have collectively pushed him and then it just kind of immediately snowballed and became this gigantic thing uh chappy just wants one giant fight for his birthday so he's posted on the forums we've talked to ccp uh we've talked to a lot of big players um you can find the forum post and i'll let somebody else with more of the details give that stuff but really all it is is that we just want a, a huge old freaking fight for him to be in because he wants to he loves eve and he wants this to be a, a solid memory and a presentation of what eve has to offer for us all a bit premature but a send-off in style basically that yeah, being said, definitely. I want to note that I'm going to do my damnedest to not make this be his send-off, and he's going to continue to play for as long as possible. That it's a bit premature, but... I understand his caution, and I love the fact that we're doing this, but at the same time, if he continues to play afterwards, I don't want anybody to call foul, because I will be doing my damnedest to make sure he still can. Well, happy birthday, Chappie, and uh, we look forward to a big fight for you today. Go ahead. Uh, well, I would like to, to kind of put in a little bit more. Uh, I kind of hit it off with Ash because me and Ash both are ex-Army. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm an ex-Medic. Uh, Ash is ex-Scout. Uh, and uh, we kind of hit it off talking in comms and everything. And um, when I first met him, I was kind of down and out. Uh, I was going through the anniversary of losing just about well, actually, all my friends that I was in overseas with. I'm literally the last guy uh, alive for a while. And then we'll all be gone. But anyway, uh, so I had a lot of stuff going on. Of course, yes, my house burnt down and I lost just about all my uh, military stuff and, and, and things that I had memories of and, and stuff. But uh, I came to notice... Uh, not just with Astrothy and Melrose, but the guys from Horde, when I first found out I had cancer, uh, I was a part of Horde at the time. Uh, they helped me through it. Every corp I have ever been a part of in this game since 2000, I think 11, 12, something like that. Uh, if I had any problems or anything that was going on, Everybody always came in and made sure I was doing good, made sure I was great. So I made it my business to every dime that I made, which there for a while I was very space rich. Uh, I made sure to give back to players, whether it was doing fleets and sending off uh, prizes with fleets and things of that nature. Because I felt like if Eve could sit there and give to me, I needed to give back. And this fleet that I'm doing is not more of a send off to me in my head. It's more of, I want to give back to Eve. Uh, I told, uh, I talked with CCP uh, convict last night and I explained to him how much, you know, Eve meant to me and for him to, to explain it to his fellow employees and stuff. So they know that there are players like me that love this game 
and it means a lot to us. And for tonight, that's all I want. I want us to get out there and pretty much tie-dye system and blow up every single ship that's out there. I'm going to be gating in my knit hogger. Oh. Uh, just because I was always told, do not gate a carrier. Well, guess what? I'm jumping it in two systems out, and I am gating for two systems into the Dagum system. <laughs> I, I'm I just got to interrupt here. I just got to interrupt here and say that one of the funniest things about this whole planning process was we were talking about it and somebody else came in and like Chappie kept going on about his plans. And this dude was like, dude, you, you, you could lose it. And Chappie's like, yeah, that thanks. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Go ahead, Chappie. But uh, yeah, my, my whole point is I have my Phoenix and my dead hogger. Uh, both of them's going to be in Tenundin at uh oh 200 hours eve time and american time that's going to be nine uh eastern six uh or well, actually that would be 10 eastern and 7 p.m uh pacific time uh we're going to get out there and we're going to blow it up but yeah it, it's 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 blown up uh i've gotten people that are constantly uh texting me here since last night when all this come about uh asking me what's going on how they can help my friends i i contacted my uh gobbins from horde and as soon as i said chappy 78 and he said chaptoberfest and i said <laughs> yes sir and he said i know who you are what do you need and i told him what was going on and he said horde's going to be there we'll be there at one uh an hour early to make sure everything's set up for you uh, that was the first thing. And then he started contacting people. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, uh, my friends in Horde, they still remember me. And it has been years <laughs> since I've been in Horde. <laughs> but apparently there's still some there that remember me. So they're coming out. We've got uh, Goons is coming out. Uh, matter of fact, we have one of our friends from Goons. He tried his best last night to find me an avatar to, to fly, which I... <laughs> I mean, he was so dead set to trying to do it that he was getting me ready to do skills and everything and skill tree me into it, uh, skill and jet me into it. But of course, it's it was not safe enough. But Tymerian uh, floated the idea of literally transferring him a character so that way he could legally fly it himself and then have it be transferred back and pay the cash to do it. <laughs> it was nuts. Yeah. Mm. Uh, it, it was that was to the point they was he was thinking of every he was calling he was talking to everybody he knew to see if there was a a avatar that was close enough that we could get it there it was crazy i mean he was going crazy over it last night wow we spent i think what probably about two hours on it ash (laughs) yeah let's get let's actually tell people we have a lot of people watching here thanks to bornb who invaded us just a second ago oh sorry not invaded raided i got invasion on the mind but he uh, good word delivered a bunch of fans here so we'll take advantage of this moment and plug this event that's going to happen right now for chappie it's chappie's birthday this may be uh his um he's not going to be able to fleet up um after a while so this may be one of his big bash and uh, it's going to happen today in a few hours so if you can make it to this system make it there there will be supers on field and maybe some surprises Tell us about what time this happens and where it happens. All right. Um, for any single people that just want to come out by themselves that don't have fleets or, or corpses that can make it, uh, you can meet Mero uh, in Pimene at uh, zero one hundred hours eve time, and you can fleet up with us and go out to Tenundin, uh which is T U N U. <laughs> yeah, we'll bring in. Drake. Well, let's let's start backwards. <laughs> let's start backwards in case people have to make their own way there, and then you can say where they can participate. The on ramps are, but the fight's right. going to happen in Tunadon, right? Yeah, uh, it's going to happen there. Uh, the fight's going to start at two uh, two in the morning. Um, two eve any time. Capitals are, yeah, that's two eve time. Uh, so any capitals that want to get there, you want to get there a little bit before uh, 0200 eve time. Uh, so you'll be able to to get staged and everything. Uh, 
it's we're gonna meet up once we at once i actually get into system i'm going to try to get somebody to to find a big and open space just a a, a dead space in the middle of space and then i will contact everybody and we'll all meet up there and just start fighting then uh but uh it will be in tenundin um any fleets that want to go that's where you head to uh, it's a little uh, low set pocket. Uh, it's uh, midway. We found out last night, midway between Amar, Jita, and Dodixi. Uh, it's about same e- even jumps from all three. Mm-hmm. So, but get uh, there by mm-hmm. two by uh, two Eve time. U- T- two UTC. Yes. Yeah, get as many people there as you can. It'll be a huge brawl with supers in honor of Chappie. Yes, we're going to have supers, we're going to have uh, carriers, dreadnoughts, uh, CCP, uh, uh, my mind's went convict. Down. Convict is coming in and he promised me surprises. So CCPZ were going to come in. We you got a uh, matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, I was told uh, there's a couple of other people. Uh, big groups that are coming in like goons horde brave uh i want to thank all of them uh for wanting to participate so we, we we've got a lot of people that's coming in snuffed out's coming possibly test you see also bjorn b says he's moved his battle rourke there for the stream today see you tonight heart oh boy uh, yes um i also uh the space pope gave me his best well wishes and his group's going to come out i don't i'm not sure he's going to be able to make it but uh his group's going to come uh there, there's a lot of people i i don't want to say you know everybody and, and right. miss anybody but if i it's, do I'll it's going to be a hell show man like it's going to be the place to be uh, well um, how does that i mean it's how does that make you feel uh to know that these this many people care about you uh all from the game that you like so much. Honestly, when I woke up this morning and I got on to check the uh, forum, I bawled for an hour. Oh. To see so many people that was just, even if they couldn't make it, they were just, you know, wishing me well, thanking me. Uh, I've had, uh, I've, <laughs> I'm starting, my eyes are watering up now. Um, yeah, mine too. It's all right, dude. It's uh, I've played many games. Biggest compliments in my you can get as a person. It, so. it really is, and I've played many games in my life, and I've had bad things happen to me and stuff, but I've never had a, a gaming community come together around me like Eve has. And by far, for the rest of my life, I will go to my grave believing that eve is the best game ever and the community is the best community ever i've i've always talked about it i have always talked about it since i started playing it uh but yeah eve's just the best game ever yeah well i think it's the moments like this where we realize uh, this goes beyond the game uh in certain respects, people are connecting with you. They're sympathizing with your tragic news um, from before and now, and um, you know they're they're gonna do what they can for you. And um, this is their show of appreciation. They're all stopping their schedules. Uh, they're all making time I, to make this happen. I do want to put one thing out there. Mm-hmm. I have not heard back from Wingspan yet. I've always had a huge uh, love for Wingspan. Uh, back when my dad passed away, one of their guys uh, destroyed one of my ships and sent me one of their emails, you know, the, the little emails they like to send yeah. out. And uh, I sat there, and even though it was, we had just buried my dad, and I got on Eve to play because I just wanted something to, take my mind away i started laughing my butt off that i literally fell out of my chair 
because this guy had the I can't I had him for so long and I lost it unfortunately and I was so mad that I lost this this mail because it was literally the funniest thing I had it to where I was showing everybody this mail and they were even cracking up on it after I explained the story to them and uh if anybody from Wingspan or anybody who knows anybody from Wingspan can get them to come please tell them I want them to come and I want emails. I, I want tons of emails from Wingspan. Please. Emails or kill mails? Uh, the, just the, the, the mails from their, the emails, emails oh, that they send up. Their mails. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're emails that they get for uh, their deliveries of torpedoes. I plan right. on, uh, with my Phoenix and my Nidhogger, getting uh, mails from them saying that they've made their deliveries. All right. Well, so uh looks like somebody will contact Wingspan. Uh hopefully hopefully we'll get that to happen as well. And um you know, it's uh it's impressive how you managed to get through uh so many obstacles. Um so we'll hope that you can continue to get through uh, as long as you can. In the meantime, we're going to send you off with a great big party today. Uh, in the Citadel region, if you can make it, this is a good it's a good opportunity to see a big old fight and to do it um, for a good reason for Chad. for the yeah yeah definitely for the all right well I well, appreciate it thank you so much sure Chappie. good luck in the future and we'll we'll do all we can to get people there today uh, we'll even ping TIS which is not something that we do normally for things like this but we will definitely do it today it's going to be it's going to be going down around about uh when will it be like uh, 6 p.m pacific time so it'll be 0100 eve time well how many hours tomorrow? is it from now can somebody do yeah. the calculations because you know it is a global well, game. It's six hours okay so that's 5 p.m pacific um, yeah yeah i think it'll be uh, pretty noticeable on the map <laughs> It's uh, about to be 2 o'clock uh, uh, Eastern Standard Time here in America, and it's 17.57 in uh, Eve time, so mm -hmm. uh, Pacific time is three hours behind me, so that puts yeah. them at being uh, uh, so 12 o'clock. Captain Pugwash asks, I just got here, what have, what have I missed? And... Uh, just to bring everybody up to speed that's joining us now, there's going to be a big fight today. Uh, it's a send-off uh, for one of our players, Chappie. It's his birthday. Uh, he's diagnosed with, uh, well, actually a re-emergence re of cancer. Uh, so he doesn't know how long he'll be able to play EVE Online. Um, but today we're going to make it special. We're going to do a huge fight. It's going to be in... Um, the Citadel region in Tunadon. I have that up on screen. And we will see you there at 2 o'clock UTC. That's when everybody's arriving. There'll be different fleets coming from different directions, so you might look around and see who you could join. If not, make your way there and um, and have some fun. Yeah, look out for streams. We'll be streaming it. There'll be other people streaming it for sure. Um, uh, oh, and I'll do Ash one. Oh, Ash will be. Uh, yeah, we're we. I was talking to Ash last night. I've had several people asking how we're going to communicate, and uh, Ash will be streaming as well. Uh, we're going to try to get at least, if I can, one member from all the fleets uh, to, to get into our comms so we could be able to communicate with each other to, to be able to meet up and, and and at least make some kind of means of being able to talk to each other and keeping this going I'll, uh, to where it's not a big I'll mess. Try I'll try and make sure to communicate with Ash so we know where uh, where you are, so we can get some uh, really cool shots of uh, of you in uh, in your dread and all that. Ashtarathi, yes, um, I appreciate. It. Is Chappie going to be in your fleet? Ash, I I plan on being in Chappie's fleet. Correct. The other oh the other way around. Okay, <laughs> going to be in Chappie's fleet, and so they want to know if they want to join Chappie. Where do they go? Uh, right. We will be. Go. All right. Uh, for if you want to fly with me, 
to go out to uh to London. Uh we would be meeting up in Pamene at uh zero one hundred hours Eve time, which is six PM uh the, the 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific time, uh, which is I uh, figured out here in about seven hours. Yeah, that sounds uh, right. Seven if hours. If I'm not mistaken. I, so, uh, I also want to chime in and say Defiant Daniel has uh, mentioned in chat that he will also be streaming it. I Probably BRMB maybe will stream if he's going to be there. Um, there. And you will stream too, right? So there'll be different opportunities to see it. So look out for it. But if you can, participate in it. Take your ship there. If you do nothing else, dust it off. Take it here and uh, get it destroyed. Drakes are uh, cheap. Yes. Uh, oh, by the way, I about forgot. Whoever gets the highest uh, uh, hip, uh, DPS on both of my ships, the two people with the highest DPS, on the, uh, the one on the Phoenix and one on the Nidhogger, y'all will be getting skins. Uh, I don't know which ones yet. Mm -hmm. I gotta go pick them up. But whoever gets the kill mail for the Phoenix and the Nidhogger, you will be getting a Drake fully fit by me with a uh, headhunter skin in the cargo bay and uh, one other skin. I couldn't afford the two uh, headhunter skins. I bought another one. But the other one, that it's not a... a headhunter but it is a pretty nice looking skin i thought but you will be getting a both of you both uh ones will be getting a fully fit drake with the skin oh, that's awesome it's an awesome bonus nice all right chappy it was nice to meet you and good luck really good thank luck thank you so much yeah it's uh you've already withstood more than uh most of us could. So good for you. Good on you. And uh, let's let's have some fun today. Uh, remind you why you like Eve so much. Yes, I appreciate that. Thanks. Okay. Um, once again, don't be late. Well, actually, be early to the Citadel region, Tanadan. Even if you're a new player, just make your way there. Um, probably want to come in through Kulalen because uh, that's the high sec system. Um, there's going to be a huge fight. Come and watch it. Come participate in it. And if you can't, uh, watch it on stream. And you can probably find it on Twitch uh, through either Ashtarothi or there was a few other people who are going to be streaming it as well. We're not exactly sure. Um, so check uh, it out. Yes, I've gotten, I've actually had one person say they're going to stream the entire thing and put it on YouTube. So it'd be, uh, they'll actually have it on YouTube too. So it'll last for ever, basically. Yeah. Well, okay. So now also Scottish Desks is also saying he's streaming it. So what I'm going to say is that all of you streamers that are streaming it, as soon as you're done streaming it, make a highlight of it and get it to me. Because what I want to do is actually stitch multiple cameras together to make a video. So everybody who's streaming it or can record it, Please record it and then get it to Ashtarothi ASAP so we can put together like a final product. Yeah. Great. All right. Uh, I'm ending this on a positive note because we're going to have some fun uh, and we're going to uh, send Chappie um, a, a great big message on his birthday today. So we'll see you there. CCP's involved. Some of the biggest alliances are involved. People are just asking what they can do. I've seen a lot of people in chat say they're setting their alarm clock for 2 a.m. to wake up to, uh, to do this. And uh, that's amazing. It's, uh, it's, it's really good stuff how, um, how we rally around uh, people who uh, need some help. So it's also a tribute to you, Chappie. Obviously a good guy. And the telemarketers. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, you gotta hate them telemarketers. <laughs> I, 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 I was one for a while. Oh, is this, <laughs> is this you calling me? <laughs> no, it's a, it's a feature of today. the shows. So it seems to be the feature feature of the it shows. It is. So you know what it is. No show is really. That's the buzzer. It's really a show. Yep, without. it's the buzzer. Yep. <laughs> it's time's up. All right, Chappie. We'll see you today. It's gonna be fun. Uh, we'll have a great birthday for you. Uh, see you at two UTC time. Uh, in uh, Tanadan, 
And uh, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. I appreciate it too. Thank you. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go and try to uh, get some more drinks and assist that I need. <laughs> All right. Do your <laughs> thing. We'll see you soon. All right. See you later. Thank you. Sure. All right, everybody. That uh, will do it for us. Um, we're going to uh, wrap up the show now and raid someone, but uh, we will see you today at in seven hours as we move over to um, the Citadel for a big, big fight. Mm. Put the cams on one more time. There. We got to figure out these cams. We'll, we'll We'll figure out how to make those work. All right, let's do this raid. Who do you want to raid? I I don't have eyes yet. Who who should we raid? I'm looking. I'm looking. Um, I'm looking. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, let me look. Let me look. <laughs> Herc Live is good. Um. Oh, we didn't get to all, our. Yeah. All the main streamers are currently in the chat. I think they're Herc all, Live might be the right answer. They're all here. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Well, they raided us today. Herc we... underscore Live. Okay. Yeah, Herc Live is a good guy. He's raided me before. I'm having a really hard time finding the uh, EVE Online streams. It's uh just go herk h h e r k underscore live. Got it. You know, if you give somebody else moderator powers, you can actually set it so that, that way yeah. they can do it through command. You should have moderator. I thought you did. Oh <laughs> right, I was in. I was in the view that. It's okay. I, I got it. Yeah, we're we're going to bomb him because he's got uh, about one, he's got about 40 people in channel. Sometimes this is not a nice thing, right? You, you bring 300, 400 people into a channel. This is one of the reasons <laughs> we dump uh, into Bjorn B because he can handle a huge crowd. Like it's, it's not a shock to him, but um, if you take three or four, well, in this case, hundred so, times it's, the it's, number someone has. It's, it's shark has got that. It's, it's, he's fine. It's all fine. part of the Twitch experience. Don't worry it, about it. It's okay. fine. We're fine. It's all fine. All right. All right. I've done that. I've dumped like uh, 200 people on a, a Russian streamer, and the person was like, <laughs> what do I do now? Oh, I've definitely caused pan panic attacks for sure. Yeah. Here you go, guys. We'll see you later today, 2 o'clock in the Citadel. Don't be late. Bye.